This is Stephen Tony. Seen here, about 40 years of age, having joined the 193rd Battalion of the Canadian Expeditionary Force in 1916. Reportedly born in a boat near Little Harbour, Nova Scotia in the 1870s, Tony was a Mi'kmaq Cooper who called Pictou Landing home. Once overseas, he'd soon gain a reputation as a formidable sniper. Tony was one of an estimated 4,000 Indigenous soldiers who enlisted across Canada in the First World War. Unfortunately, not much is officially known about Tony, but his military service record, some newspaper clippings from the time, and people familiar with his family's history shed some light on his story. After training with the 193rd at Camp Aldershot near Kenful, he embarked from Halifax on the SS Olympic. He was eventually transferred to the 85th Battalion, the Nova Scotia Highlanders, who would later make a name for themselves at Vimy Ridge in the spring of 1917. Private Charles Murray of New Glasgow, a fellow member of the 85th, wrote in a letter home that was published in the Picto Advocate. Stephen has been with us about three months and is a crack shot. Consequently, he was one of the snipers and did good work. In mud to his hips, he calmly shot a machine gunner and one Heine sniper. One account published in a newspaper says while under machine gun fire, Tony was tasked with finding the source and dealing with it. It says he went into no man's land at night, concealing himself in a shell hole and waited. He eventually took out the German gun nest himself. Tony was poisoned in a gas attack in June 1917. From hospital, he wrote in a letter, ready to go to France again. I did good work in France. I got about 10 Germans, sniping, and if all the boys get that many, the war will soon be over. The exposure to gas later caused health problems for Tony, despite initially recovering. Chronic bronchitis. And a medical record says the gas had affected his eyes, so that he was obliged to give up his sniping duties. Tony returned to Canada shortly before the end of the war. A November 1918 write-up in the Herald claims, in any engagement his average was the killing of three Hun snipers, and he himself has said that he got as high as 16 men in a single engagement. Another article details how Tony was commemorated along with two other Indigenous soldiers during a ceremony in New Glasgow. The article says the event was arranged through its leading, public-spirited citizens who are active in seeing that our boys are not forgotten who wanted to recognize them in the same way as our own returned boys. This account claims Tony had killed about 70 enemy soldiers during his time overseas. CBC News could not verify that number in official records. As of 1921, it's noted that Tony was living in Muscadabit with his wife, Annie. He died in 1943. In the First World War, more than 619,000 people enlisted in the Canadian Expeditionary Force across the country. Of those, more than 35,000 called Nova Scotia home. An estimated 4,000 Indigenous soldiers enlisted across Canada for the war. On its website, the Canadian government says Mi'kmaq and Maliseet in eastern Canada sent nearly half of their eligible male population. <laughs>